Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, as you can probably tell from the title, we're going to be doing another tech experiment and that is we're going to be trying to upgrade from Windows XP to Microsoft Neptune. Now I know some of you out there might be asking yourselves, well wait a second, how on earth is this possible? Microsoft Neptune predates Windows XP, in fact it was a very very early pre-release copy of Windows that was eventually going to become the next consumer release of Windows, uh, the very first one based on Windows NT, uh, which would eventually evolve into the Whistler project and then Windows XP as I'm sure most of you guys know. So yes, Microsoft Neptune does predate Windows XP, but the interesting thing is it actually uses a higher version number than Windows XP does. Windows XP's NT version is 5.1. However, Microsoft Neptune's NT version is 5.5. It's actually a newer NT version than Windows XP. This was actually a viewer suggestion. I just thought it'd be really cool to take a look at uh, in today's video. So we have a fresh install of uh, Microsoft Windows XP Home Edition Service Pack 2, as you can see right here, on the Dell Latitude D610. Yeah, we're not doing this on the 98 PC today because well, we're kind of in a state of limbo, as you guys may know if you saw the last video on that computer. Uh, I'm kind of looking into some options to see if we can get the Windows Vista. Actually, I won't say anything. If you guys want to see uh, what went on with that project, go ahead and check out the video. But, yeah, today's video is going to be on the Dell Latitude D610. So, one of the things that I think we should do first, before we actually pop in the CD and begin the upgrade, is, you guessed it, we're going to make some theme modifications, and I think what we're going to actually do is change the theme to the Windows Classic theme, because Microsoft Neptune obviously does not have the Luna theme, so if we upgrade to it, it's just going to default back to the regular Classic theme. But what I want to do is uh, change some theme preferences from here in Windows XP, so we're going to go to Windows and Buttons and change this to the Windows Classic style. And uh, we're going to actually change the color scheme. So let's go to, uh, let's say, rows here. We'll go ahead and click on the rows uh, classic style, and we'll hit apply. And once that applies, we're going to, of course, make some uh, modifications to the font and the size of everything. Yeah, let's do like a cyan color, make it bold, make it italicized. Okay. Yeah, again, not the most visually appealing thing, I'm sure, to some of you guys, but... This is just uh, for the purposes of this experiment to see if Neptune will actually retain uh, all, all of these settings. Because we saw in like a regular, I mean, in the Windows Massive Upgrade video on the 98 PC and in the original video I did in a VM uh, back in 2016, we were able to retain a lot of the custom theme preferences that we set. The only difference this time around is obviously we are upgrading to a version of Windows that is technically older than this one, but is newer to the system solely because of the NT version. And yes, we are going to kind of scatter the icons around on the desktop. Uh, and yeah, this was, I actually had to reinstall Windows XP on this thing for the uh, Motorola Rocker or the iTunes phone history video that I did. Uh, which was actually, it's, it's actually been doing very well, so thank you guys uh, so much for that. I'm glad that you guys are enjoying that one. But yeah, that, that's why I've got iTunes and uh, QuickTime Player on here. That's actually interesting, you can't even, oh yeah, because like the background's gray, you can actually not see uh, the gray selection box when I'm selecting all these icons, kind of funny. So I think that is good enough, guys. We're gonna go ahead and pop in the Microsoft Neptune build 5111 installation CD and uh, get this upgrade going. Actually, one thing we should do before we launch the setup is change the system date because Neptune does have a time bomb, so we'll set this back to, 1999, I know I could have just typed it in, but whatever, and we're going to set it to December, because uh, I believe the build was compiled uh, in early December, so we'll set it to like the 16th, so December 16th, 1999. This CD-ROM contains a newer version of Windows than the one you are presently using. Would you like to install Neptune? And we're going to say, of course we do. So we're going to say yes, and it's going to come up with uh, the setup wizard. So we're going to click on next. We're going to accept the license agreement. It should ask us for the product key, so let me get that really quickly here. Let's go to advanced options. Okay, location of Neptune files. Now this we are going to have to change because Windows XP, uh, this is a clean install of XP, so it utilizes the Windows folder 
uh, for the location of all of our you know Windows system files. So we're going to have to change that in here. So we're going to manually specify that the Windows installation folder is going to be Windows and we'll click on OK. I think leaving these options unchecked will be fine. Uh, so we'll do that and accessibility options. We get the option to turn on magnifier and narrator. So we'll just leave those off for now. And we'll click on next and yeah there it goes copying installation files setup is now copying installation files to your computer so it's finished copying those files now basically how this is going to work is it's going to now restart we'll just click on finish to speed it up here and i'm actually going to boot into the bios to make sure that the system date change uh, took effect it should have but we're just going to you know double check just to be safe for some reason the date is set to 2079 i guess by changing it in windows xp because it ends it's a year that ends in a nine and the december 16th uh took effect so i don't know can you actually set the date back to a I don't think you can set yeah that's the problem yeah i don't think you can actually set the date back to a date before the BIOS date because the BIOS date is from like 2005 or maybe yeah so you actually can't set it to 1999 I actually wonder if this is like a Y2K style thing but like the reverse of the problem with Y2K where now it's got two zero as the preceding two digits because you see if I I'm at the year 2000 here if I press the down arrow key to go backwards it goes to 2079 so you can't actually type in 1999 and apparently you can't go past 2079. But you saw that we set the date to 1999 in, in Windows XP, but the BIOS thinks it's 2079 because uh, it thinks that it's one year behind the year 2000, which in this case is 2079. This is literally just like the Y2K problem because the Y2K problem was just, again, the opposite of this, 1999 rolling over to the year 1900 because only the last two digits will change. So obviously, this scenario wouldn't be an issue because you're not going to have to in a like regular production environment set the date back to a date before this computer was manufactured uh so that's why the y2k bug was a problem because you were you know counting up from 1999 to 2000 which the computer would interpret as the year 1900 if not patched correctly so this is actually very very interesting i never noticed this before so yeah we're basically having the inverse of the y2k problem we're just going to keep it set like this so we're going to uh, exit and uh, not change anything and uh, that so hopefully Windows will still and you see we get the option here for XP Home Edition or Neptune setup we're gonna boot into Neptune setup uh, hopefully Windows will still recognize the date as 1999 um, or it might think it's 2079 because of the BIOS we'll see but yeah this is the standard Neptune setup process right here or really the setup process for any windows nt based release of windows where you've got the windows nt style setup so it's going to go through here uh, and it says that we are going to install an evaluation version of neptune operating system which contains a time limited expiration okay we'll press enter we will set up neptune now by pressing enter uh, so it should uh, yeah existing partition so we're going to install on this partition doesn't say anything about upgrading at the moment we're just going to press enter you chose to install neptune on a partition that contains another operating system installing neptune on this partition might cause the other operating system to function improperly caution a windows folder already exists that may contain a windows installation if you continue the existing windows installation will be overridden so it's not doing the upgrade then it's going to overwrite files all right so yeah as you guys saw that didn't really give us the result that we were looking for it said it was going to overwrite the windows folder which we definitely uh well we want to overwrite the contents in the windows folder and like do the upgrade but we don't want it to delete any of our files which it said it was going to do uh, so i actually read over the email that uh, the viewer who suggested this to me sent me and uh, he actually said that he did this with the copy of neptune that is on winworld which is actually a slightly modified copy it's not a original copy that came from Microsoft. I mean, it is the same build, but it's been modified to remove the product key and it just kind of changes certain things like that. I, I believe it's been modified by a third party, but he said he was able to upgrade from XP to Neptune with this build. So we're going to try this out. Obviously, this, this is not like a different build of Neptune. It's just the, the same copy, but it's a slightly modified copy. So yeah, I've got that CD in the drive right now. And yeah, you guys can see that, uh, well, Windows XP is not able to boot anymore. Uh, that's because the, the Neptune setup program copied all of its files 
uh, over to you know where it needs to copy them, which includes the Windows folder and yeah, System32. Uh, so it's not able to find a uh, file that it needs to boot properly, so it says it's missing or corrupt. And uh, so yeah, XP is not bootable now. So we might have screwed this up. I might have to reinstall Windows XP, which I will do if this does not allow us to upgrade. But we're going to just restart the system and uh, we're going to boot off of this CD and uh, hopefully this one will uh, just allow us to upgrade it. Yeah, honestly, I think I'm gonna have to reinstall XP because the Neptune setup is already on the hard drive, so I don't know if this is gonna detect Windows XP. Uh, the reason why it still says Windows 2000 up here, because if you remember when we booted off the hard drive, it said Neptune setup, uh, this is because from what I understand, and this is I think what I did in my Neptune installation video on the 98 PC where I actually essentially manually created one of these CDs um, by taking the Neptune contents from the Neptune CD and then the Windows 2000 boot sector from the Windows 2000 setup CD and kind of merging them together. So that kind of creates this like setup where it still identifies itself as Windows 2000. Once it copies the files over though, then it, it'll actually begin to identify itself as Neptune. So we're gonna press enter, and oh yeah, check out the, <laughs> this license agreement is a little bit screwed up here. So we'll press F8, I agree. And okay, so it's found an, an existing, you know, installation of Windows, so we're gonna press enter to install. You chose to install Windows 2000 on a partition that contains another operating system. Installing Windows 2000 on this partition might cause the other operating system to function improperly. This was the same message we got before we were able to press C, and then, yeah, leave the current file system intact. So this was an option that we did not get uh, previously. So we're going to leave the current file system intact, and so it shouldn't format anything, it shouldn't get rid of any files, it should just copy the new files, or in this case, the older files. Uh, yeah, it's just going to begin copying files to, again, it says the Windows 2000 installation folders. So in theory, from here on out, it should be like a standard Windows install. We should obviously, I mean, setup's going to copy files right here. It's almost done with that. It should then reboot and have us go into the uh, next portion of the setup, which is again going to be very Windows 2000-like. Uh, it's just going to identify itself as Neptune. There's going to be new branding, a new boot screen, all that good stuff. I'm sure you guys have you know seen Windows Neptune before. And we're not going to press any key to boot from the CD since we don't need to. And we actually still have the option for Windows XP Home Edition in the boot menu. So uh, that's a good sign. So yeah, here's the Microsoft Neptune boot screen if you haven't seen it before. Again, very Windows 2000-like. So here we go. We're at the Welcome to Neptune setup wizard. We're going to click on Next, obviously. All right, so for the system locale and the keyboard layout, we're going to go with the default options. Uh, we'll put in M for the name. Computer name, we'll just call this Neptune. And we'll just leave it. And oh yeah, see, check that out. The date, uh, so it actually kept the BIOS date. Uh, so for so it thinks it's 2079. There we go. So Thursday, December 16th, 1999. Perfect. Next. And yeah, even if you didn't set the date correctly there, as you guys probably saw if you uh, watched my Neptune install on the 98 PC video, it will actually prompt you once it's done with this phase of the setup here uh, to change the system data. It'll basically say you're running an evaluation copy of Windows. Please make sure the date and time are set correctly, and it will essentially force you to change it there. Now, interestingly enough, on the boot menu here, you see we've got the option for Microsoft Neptune and Microsoft Windows XP Home Edition, so we still have two options. We're going to select Neptune and see uh, if it boots up successfully. So yeah, it logged us in here, or we're just waiting for the desktop to appear. Right off the bat, it looks like that this is just going to be a clean install of Neptune. And I guess it just installed to the same folder. Oh yeah, like see, there, there's there's no drivers installed. Uh, so I mean, we had a proper display driver under XP. Yeah, so here we are on the desktop, and it just looks like a regular clean install of Neptune. Uh, we get the option to create the first Windows identity, which I mean, we can just do that here, and no, we won't restart. So I wonder how it configured this because it still has the XP option in the boot menu. There's not another partition. Oh, we have Windows and WinNT. Okay, so it installed to the WinNT folder. That's that's what it did. So it didn't actually perform the upgrade. Because, see, it, it didn't give me the option to install, to choose what folder you want to install it to. Because I would have changed it to Windows if we had that option. So, uh, yes, this is the, the now incomplete XP installation because 
And just to show you, I'll go ahead and restart. The Windows XP installation, I guarantee you, is going to do the exact same thing that it did uh, before we installed Neptune from this CD. So we'll wait for the boot menu to uh, show up here. So yep, that's exactly what it does. What I'm gonna do is, and I'm, I'm gonna do this off camera because it's just gonna be a standard install, but I'm gonna reinstall Windows XP, you know, format this drive, install a fresh copy of XP, and we'll, we will try this again because I think that my mistake was using uh, this copy of Neptune as opposed to the one from WinWorld, which the person who suggested this to me said uh, that that copy specifically worked. So we're gonna try that and we'll see if we get any different results. All right, welcome back everybody. So here we are uh, in the, we got a fresh install of Windows XP. We've got the Microsoft Neptune set up loaded. Once again, we're gonna go into advanced options and change the Windows installation folder to Windows to again specify that. And just to show you once again, we'll go into uh, my computer here and we are using the Windows folder to store all of our uh, Windows system files. So we're going to choose that. We're going to click on OK. So we've restarted right now and we're going to boot up uh, not from the CD but from the Neptune setup that is stored on the hard drive. All right, so we've got the list of partitions once again. It has obviously found our C drive with an NTFS partition on it. We're going to install it on that and it will give us the same message, you know, about you're about to install Neptune on a partition that contains another operating system. We're going to say C. Okay, so it looks like it's going to do the exact same thing as it did before. It's going to say a Windows folder already exists that may contain a Windows installation if you continue, the existing Windows installation will be overridden. So this is exactly what it did before. So we can use the folder and delete the existing Windows installation by pressing L. We can use a different folder by pressing escape, which is basically what we did in the last uh, clip where we, I mean, I, I kind of unknowingly did that because the setup automatically defaulted to the WinNT directory while XP was installed in the Windows directory. So we basically had two installations on the same drive, but the XP installation was not bootable. And uh, so I think this time we'll just press L and maybe it won't delete the files. I don't know. I mean, it says it's going to delete the files, but, and yeah, it's actually deleting files. I also just realized that I forgot to uh, make modifications to the desktop, but obviously that doesn't matter because uh, it deleted all of those files. Uh, and once we restart, and just to verify, you know, once we restart here, it should only have the Neptune option in the boot menu. So yeah, from what I'm seeing, I don't think that we're going to be able to upgrade XP uh, to Neptune, which is kind of unfortunate. I was kind of skeptical about this whole thing because obviously this doesn't sound like it would work because this is, this is an older version of Windows, even though the NT version is newer, uh, the setup will, uh, like, think that you're going to do the upgrade and it'll come up and say, oh, hey, like you have a you know newer version of Windows because it's pulling the NT version. But obviously you guys can see that there's no option to like, for example, in the NT upgrade saga, where when we would boot from the NT installation media, it would say, oh, there's a previous version of Windows NT. Would you like to upgrade it? And you'd say, yes, I, I, I would like to upgrade it. And, and it would not change any of your settings. But this didn't do that. It literally just deleted files. Now we should, once we get past this screen, uh, there should, yeah, so see, there's not even like a boot menu anymore to select XP or Neptune. So it just got rid of the existing XP installation. So, uh, that is unfortunate, but this was still a fun little experiment. So yeah, for you guys out there who were kind of wondering, uh, in this case, yeah, we're not able to upgrade from Windows XP to Windows Neptune, uh, and keep all of the settings. Now we can, obviously, like you guys saw in the previous clip, we can install Neptune to the WinNT folder and keep the XP installation in the Windows folder. That, that will work fine. Assuming that you load off of the CD instead of booting into XP and starting the upgrade process and then manually specifying the Windows folder. That's why all those files got overridden and when we tried to boot to XP, we got that error message about it not being able to find whatever file that it was looking for because it was gone. It had been overridden or just deleted. So yes, you can kind of dual boot Neptune and Windows XP, but you cannot upgrade uh, straight from XP to Neptune and keep all of your documents and settings. So 
that is going to go ahead and wrap it up for today's experiment, guys. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this one. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do every single week, multiple times per week on this channel. And if you guys have any comments, questions, or video suggestions for me, be sure to leave those down below. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.